you probably wouldn't think there was anything special about this area, a quiet middle-class neighborhood. But it's now notorious. A group of policemen held suspects here indefinitely without charge and abused them, apparently for fun. It looks like a fairly ordinary suburban street in the Philippines, but this house, right next to others, was effectively what human rights advocates are calling a torture chamber. It was an illegal police detention facility, not registered with anyone. And they keep people here indefinitely after catching them on drug raids. This is where the police would keep their office. And this area is where they kept uh, their suspects. They turned torture into an elaborate game. They'd spin this wheel and let chance dictate whether the victims, perhaps as many as 50, would be beaten, hung upside down, poked in the head or other abuses. This case is significant because the police have been caught in the act. 14 men have been disciplined and ranking provincial police officials relieved of duty. It's a wake-up call no, for higher-ups to show that despite your police operations procedures, manual, despite your programs and practices, you know, practice on human rights-based policing, there are people, there are personnel on the ground who blatantly defy you. So are the reforms just window dressing? It's not window dressing. Uh, you know, it's uh, these things in an organization of 149,000 police personnel, as big as that, there's bound to be some people who will be challenging the system. And the, the only appropriate uh, action there is the counter action that we will take. And that's the most critical part. What do we do after this? Until then, the police are trying to reassure the public that this was an isolated case and that their motto, to protect and to serve, is not meaningless. Veronica Pedroza, Al Jazeera, Manila.